morning. I'm Becky Donnelly. I'm chairman of the missions committee here at Abundant Life, and I have the honor and pleasure of introducing our missionary family today. Back in 2015, one of our missionary families left the mission field in Senegal uh, for health reasons, and so the missions committee set out to find a, a new missionary family to support. And World Ventures soon introduced us to Matt and Lizzie Van Wert, and um, we knew right away that uh, we wanted to support them. Matt felt called into the mission field, I think, when he was 14 years old, right? And he went on to college and got a nursing degree, and he knew that he wanted to use his uh, nursing degree to help the people of Uganda. And when he started dating Lizzie, if I'm not if I'm correct, he told her that anybody that he dated would have to be interested in going to the mission field because if he got married, he would be taking his wife to the mission field. And she wholeheartedly agreed, and I think he might agree that she's his best asset. When we met them, they had four beautiful children, and they were raising support, and they had a passion and a vision and we were so pleased to be able to support them, and we were so happy to celebrate with them the day that they were told that they got enough support to go to Uganda. And Matt is not only using his medical degree, his, his nursing degree, but I guess he's just a jack of all trades in Uganda, and he helps his community uh, with all kinds of projects. And Lizzie uses her gift of hospitality and cooking and baking to reach out to her community, and she's always welcoming people into her home. And uh, I'm just really excited. I told them earlier I don't like to play favorites, but I can't help it. They're my favorites. And so I'm sure you will agree, and uh, please give them your undivided attention. I welcome Matt and Lizzie Van Wert. Wow, that is an awesome introduction. Um, I don't need to give my update now. She's, she's yeah. done a better job than I could ever do. So <laughs> let's pray and we can be dismissed. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yes, we're really excited to be here and get to share with you a little bit of uh, what's been going on in our lives and our ministry. And um, just as kind of a refresher, and for some of you who might not be familiar, this is us. Uh, at the beginning, when we first got to know you guys, back around 2015 or so, and um, you can go to the next one, and this is us last time we saw you, uh, three, almost four years ago now, and um, that was our kiddos and everything, and we were amazed at how big they were growing, and now, the next slide, this is us now, we've had to zoom out because they just keep getting bigger and bigger, so they're, they're taking up too much space on the screen. The kids are here with us, and they'll, they'll be excited to talk with you afterwards, excited like all teens are to talk yeah. to grown-ups. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's good to be here. It's good to see some familiar faces and get to reconnect a little bit, so thank you for having us. Go ahead to the next slide. Um, Becky mentioned we're with World Venture. It's a missions organization that's been around for a long time, since like 1943. And um, they got lots of missionaries all over the place. I used to know how many there were, but I haven't been able to track down how many there are these days. You can go to the next slide. Um, this is my geography lesson for you. Um, for us, we are a little geography challenged. So I like to assume that there may be others out there that are a little geographically challenged. So I wanted to share with you, this is a picture of Africa. And within Africa, there are many countries. Africa is not a country. These are things that I needed to learn. And um, the country where we serve is called Uganda. And the city where we are is called Embarara. And you can go to the next slide. Um, this is a picture of our city where we serve. Um, it is not what we imagined Africa would be like. We thought, we're going to Africa. We're going to be in the bush and grass, grass-roofed huts and things like that. And we're in the big city. Um, well, not yeah. the big city. We're in a city. We're in the second yeah. biggest yeah, city. Yeah, I was like, we're in the second biggest city. <laughs> yeah. You can go ahead to the next slide. So what in the world are we doing there? I want to share with you a little bit about what we do. Um, for me, like Becky was saying, I am a nurse, 
and I had a passion for wanting to use medical missions as a way of doing evangelism and things like that, and the way that God has worked that out is with a program called Community Health Evangelism. It's a program that's church-based, where we train people in the church, lay people with not no medical um, experience or background needed, lay people to go out into the community and make home visits and share the lessons that they've learned. And when they go out, they share a physical lesson on a physical topic that the community is interested in learning more about. And then they also, they share a spiritual lesson um, to help um, uh, just help get them healthy uh, spiritually in addition to growing and staying healthy physically. So that's kind of my main focus is working with that program and it's been neat to get started in that. Um, there, but there are lots of other little opportunities for ministry. Uh, Becky mentioned I'm kind of a handyman and I get into projects and things and the young men around me have seen that and um, I'm getting requests all the time like, oh, teach me how to do this, teach me how to do that. So through our church and with our pastor, um, we have kind of begun training some of these young men in these handyman skills and along with that we do discipleship with them and, and help them grow as men of God also, not just in their knowledge of mainly DIY. So that's kind of um, the main focuses of my ministry, training, discipleship, things like that. Elizabeth also does training and discipleship on a smaller scale because she deals with littler people. Yes. So I like to teach the Sunday school in our local church, and it's fun. All the, I love the little kids. You all scare me. The little kids, they're great. I can handle them. Um, but I enjoy um, Sunday school, and it used to be in our yard, and I'm sad when we go back that it won't be in our yard anymore. We have a building we're renting now, so that's good. But I also help in an international school that opened just before COVID. So our kids got to go for two weeks, and then lockdown happened. So we got to go back this past February. Children were out of school almost two years in Uganda from March 2020 to January 2022. There was no school. So I got to go and help, and they have me um, kind of advising the teachers and just seeing how they can better use the curriculum they're using at the international school because it's the one we homeschool with. So it's perfect. Our kids get to go and do school with other children, and I get to also be there around them but not with them 24 hours a day because they'll tell you we get tired of each other. So I help in the school and they've also asked me to help with baking and cooking classes for some of the older students and that's been a lot of fun. I enjoy it a lot um, because I like food. Who doesn't? And they like seeing the new recipes that we've tried but I also, um, well we'll talk more about that baking later, but yeah I like to use cooking to bring people into our home so that we can um, just get to know them and share with them. Yeah, so hospitality, like she's saying, is a big part of our ministry, hosting people from our church, from our community, Bible studies, and then also teams that are coming through the area or other missionaries, uh, other pastors and folks traveling through. Our town is a great place for people who are traveling to stop. It's a good midpoint for a lot of trips, so we get to host and um, be a blessing to folks in that way. Um, there are other ministry things that I never remember to talk about, but I'm remembering today. Like, I served for a little while as our field director, or field leader, leader. and um, that was a very interesting time. And, yeah, it was... And he doesn't want to do it again. Yeah, I never want to do that again. <laughs> but it was an opportunity to serve and to do ministry. Um, our kids, they're, they're not just there to be four pretty faces. They're also involved in ministry and things. They're involved in our church, helping with Sunday school. Um, also, um, while we were meeting in our yard, setting up tents and bringing down tents, they would help doing that, setting up chairs, those types of things, and just being involved in the other ministries that are going on. And this is some pictures of them getting involved in those things. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, this slide is a special one. I love this picture because it kind of symbolizes, like, with ministry, not everything is sunshine and happiness and works out perfectly every time. Sometimes you have some uphill struggles. So I like this picture for the symbolism of walking up the hill. And then also, this was taken when I was skinny. 
So I just like showing this picture off because you get to see me when I was skinny um, as I hide behind the podium now. Um, so let's talk about some of the struggles we had over the last few years and share some of those with you. You can go to the next slide. Um, one of the big things that we dealt with um, was people leaving us these last few years. Uh, when we moved to Embraer seven years ago, uh, there was a huge missionary community there who welcomed us, helped us transition and figure out our place in, in our city and get settled in and build good relationships. And over the past um, three years, we've had to say goodbye to 13 different missionary units who left either our city or our circle of friends because they had to go, well, they're still our friends. The city. Sorry. Or they city the or the country. <laughs> there we go. There you Thanks. Go. She's helping me along here. Yes. I told her I needed her up here today. Um, you can click on slides. So we said a lot of goodbyes, and it was very difficult. It was tough as a parent to see our kids saying goodbye to a lot of their best friends, um, uh, really all of their best friends, um, as they went. You can keep clicking. I think there's only one more. One more, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. And um, we spent a lot of time helping people move, close up their houses, sell off their stuff, that type of thing. Another thing that we had a struggle with, um, you can go to the next slide, was a little thing called COVID. Um, I don't know if you guys heard about it. It, it might have just been by area. us in our area, but um, maybe you have heard of it. it but it caused a lot of um, little bumps in our road. Um, we had plans. A lot of our ministry deal, it is through local churches and through school. And the government locked down churches and schools, and we weren't allowed to meet. So our plans for what we were going to be doing were changed, and um, it, it really cramped our style in a lot of ways. But you can go to the next slide. Uh, we don't want to burden you and weigh you down with a lot of the negative side of things, because in the end, God saw us through and gave us lots of neat opportunities um, initially, when the government kind of locked Uganda down, we were going to be trapped for a number of weeks. So I bought a whole bunch of supplies in town and got started doing some projects around the house, um, things that needed to be done anyways, things that would help with ministry moving forward um, and things like that. My, one of the first things I did, I learned how to stick weld. Um, with a welder and that was a really neat thing to get to learn I'd wanted to do it and now I had time because the government said I wasn't allowed to go anywhere so I built a trailer and then we used that trailer to help move all our friends away <laughs> and um, we built a building and we were, that building was in preparation for the Sunday school class that was going to meet in our at our house and uh, also for trainings and things that we host we have a classroom building outside of the house where we can meet and um, not be underneath Elizabeth's feet as she's preparing the goodies for our next break. Well, and also we built it COVID-friendly because it had yeah. to be outdoors and social distance. Outdoors and open and social distance, all that good stuff. So these are some of the things that God kind of brought along that helped us kind of um, give us opportunities for ministry um, and also getting ready for what the Lord had us moving forward. You can go to the next slide. Um, Along with some of the struggles came new opportunities. When we're saying goodbye to all these people who are leaving us, um, it opened up opportunities for Elizabeth especially to help organize and pack up house and do yard sales. Oh, yard sales. Yeah. Yay. That's what, I enjoy yard sales. I miss them immensely. We didn't get many of them this year, so it was kind of sad. Um, but we had quite a few in Uganda moving sales, and Ugandans, we have found, love them. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun to, to help people organize those and price things. And we even had our own before coming back here. And they're like, oh, no, are you leaving too? We're like, no, we are just getting rid of some things while we are gone. And they, yeah. Because we bought too much stuff at Off other people's other yard, yard sales. sales from all the people that um, but that, that's beside the point. The other ministry opportunities, um, there was a COVID team at the local hospital near us. And it's the, like, the regional hospital main hospital where people were coming from all over our region with COVID and that COVID team was very overworked 
Um, they had limited supplies, dealing with shortages and stuff, very discouraged. And Elizabeth took it upon herself. She started making treats for them uh, and, and walking them there because we weren't allowed to drive, walking them there a couple times a week and sharing those with them and also sharing Bible verses and, and notes of encouragement and thank you for the work that they were doing, serving the community and just trying to be an encouragement and blessing to them. So there was another opportunity for ministry in and amongst all that. You can go to the next slide. Um, there's also a lot to celebrate uh, over the past few years. Um, we got to see a, a lot of really good things happening. Uh, we talked about our new church and how we were meeting in our yard and stuff for a while. Um, now, a few weeks after we arrived in the States, they were able to begin renting a building, and that's something to celebrate. Pictured here is our friend Kaba and his wife Patience getting married, and in the midst of all the COVID restrictions and things, um, we got to celebrate that step with them. Kaba is one of the uh, young men in our first discipleship class when we moved to Uganda, and he's a good friend and good partner in ministry, and it was exciting to see him and Patience um, take those steps and um, be a part of their lives in that. And Elizabeth got to make all the cupcakes and cake, wedding cake and all that, and then got confetti all over all of them. So people were eating all the paper. Yeah, they like but, big candles. <laughs> but it looked beautiful. And um, confetti. All right, next slide. Um, there are other opportunities for ministry and service, getting together fellowships. Mm -hmm. um, as, as we were able to, getting our marriage fellowship in our church back running and going, getting together. It was really, really neat, really sweet times as things started to click and come back together. You can click again. Uh, more pictures of all the sweet goodies and things that I'm not supposed to talk so much about because yeah. Elizabeth says I focus too much on the food. Keep <laughs> clicking. Um, other fun things to celebrate. Um, this is my friend James, and he was probably the first Ugandan to welcome us to our town when we arrived. He was working for a friend of ours where we were staying, and he is a wonderful, godly young man. Um, he took care of our kids and helped them settle in right away. He played with them, taught them to climb the trees there and everything. And um, it's been neat getting to kind of walk alongside him, do life with him, and mentor him a little bit. He also um, recently got married. I'll show you some pictures of that not yet. in a bit. But um, this is uh, at his church doing a community health evangelism training with their church help training the church committee who is going to run the program through their church and this is the celebration where we had certificates and sodas and cake and lots of good food. Um, Ugandans are great at celebrating these achievements and it's really fun to get to be a part of it. You can go to the next one. Um, this is a big answer to prayer and this one's a uh, great testimony I want to share with you. Um, as we were saying goodbye to all those families who were leaving us, um, it was really difficult, and we were really praying, especially for the kids, that there would be opportunities for good friendships for them. And this is the answer to prayer to that. These are the friends uh, from Friends Academy, um, the small school that started up near us. And this is our girls' birthday party. Um, this past year and it was really neat to just see all the friends that our kids can have um, and we were praying for one or two people to come into their lives to be able to be friends with them and God really blessed us way above and beyond what we could ever imagine now are they all best friends yet not all of them but still like there's opportunities there and the friendships are there so it's neat and I'm here to testify that God does answer prayer, and he does take good care of us and give us what we need. In his timing, not exactly when we wanted it, yes. but he comes in his timing. You can go to the next. This is a picture of Elizabeth um, just before James' wedding, which we decided um, with all the COVID restrictions and limitations, weddings were only allowed to have 50 people. No, it was 90 at that time. Oh, 90, 90. people. Like, so, like, no big deal. You can have your wedding at our house. And, and we can host that for you. Um, so with the hundreds and hundreds of people that arrived, um, we got to host their wedding, and it was an amazing opportunity to um, be with them. And again, Elizabeth um, was able to bless them with the cakes and cupcakes for 
uh, the wedding reception. And the background there, the wood uh, panel there, is a project that me and the guys uh, from our church did and kind of that handyman stuff that we were talking about. So that was a project we did um, for our church to have some neat backgrounds while we were meeting in the tent. Um, go ahead to the next slide. Let's see what we got. More fun stuff, baby showers and other ministry opportunities. Yeah, more celebrations. Click again, see what we got. Ah, yes. Through it all, the, the message I want to share with you is that um, through the ups and downs of everything, we definitely know that we are loved. First of all, we are loved by an awesome God who has called us there to Embarara and is um, giving us what we need and um, helping us grow and in ministry and in personal lives um, there in Embarara. But also, I want to say thank you for you guys and your love and your prayers and your support because it means a lot that you have partnered with us and have come alongside us and are um, supporting us in doing what God has called us to do and being a part of that. So thank you so much. Thank you for loving us so well. We appreciate it. It means a lot. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah. So some other fun sidebar news. Um, we love hosting. We love um, hospitality and things. And we dream of at some point being able to have a small like retreat um, that we can host pastors and other church leaders uh, in our region to come and to get away from it all and to be able to get counseling, get um, just spiritual retreat. And we've taken our first step towards doing that. Um, the day we were flying out of Uganda, June 2nd, <laughs> um, I got a phone call a few hours before our flight and my friend Elijah um, let me know that the sale had gone through and we now own a small piece of land, which is kind of the first step heading towards doing that retreat center. It's small and we may have to do another piece of land sometime, but it's the first step in getting us a place built there so that we don't have to rent anymore and we can begin whatever the Lord has for us moving forward. So that was an exciting thing. Um, other fun stories of... Um, uh, milestones and things. You can click to the next. Elizabeth was very burdened that um, when ladies would come to her and say, oh, these are amazing treats that you're making or for even church. Or the young men. Or the young men. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's yeah, true. The young men. Uh, teach us how to make this. Well, Ugandans, uh, most of them, most of our friends, don't have ovens. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what Elizabeth makes are baked goods and things using an oven. So it, it's difficult when people are asking, oh, we want to do these things, we want to bake these, teach us how to do it. So she decided she was going to figure out how to do baking on the traditional charcoal stove you can see there in the picture. It's called a sagiri. It's usually a clay pot or metal pot that you put charcoal in and put a saucepan over, and that's how people do their cooking. And... Um, so she decided she was going to figure out how to do it so that she could bake in that. And she rigged it up um, with sand in the bottom of one saucepan and another one. Yeah, go to the next. Um, that she could make kind of a Dutch oven uh, over this um, sigiri and teach uh, friends how to bake using the things that they have readily available around them. So that was a fun thing. Um, this is Patience here working with Elizabeth. Um, it was during a training that we were hosting for community health evangelism. We had some guys coming down from the north of Uganda, staying with us and hosting them. And they were making lots of amazing food, keeping everybody well fed, and also baking cakes for us. Yes. Go to the next one. These are just some pictures. We can just rapidly click through these. Um, just pictures of our church um, that we're involved with and the tents and pictures of the kids helping set up with the young men. Here is the tent. The, the, if you go back, yeah, yeah. we used to go rent back. a tent, but then yep. this church is the one that helped That's right. I forgot the that. The big one. Yes, yeah. you guys helped pay for the big tent. That's the small tent yeah, we were in. Yeah, that's the little one we were renting every Next week. Next one. That's right. That's I forgot. This is, is you so guys. Cute. That is the tent that God and you guys helped erect. Thank you guys. 
Um, yeah, that's so that's the tent that we've been in, and we're no longer in it for church, but it's still being used. Oh, yeah. And that's me helping to fold up the tent and get all the air out of it. I'm a good helper. It is Let's so teach heavy. Maddie. It's so, so heavy that it takes like four or five guys to pick it up to put it on that Matt built the dolly for it and stuff. But like, yeah. it's been such a blessing having that tent because we've also yeah. used it for a wedding reception, like the church did. They've used it for some trainings. We were... Uh, it's not just not going to be used. It is oh, going yeah. to be used now that we have a building we're renting because the church has many other things that they want to do outreach-wise. Yep. So we're very excited. And there's though. plans for planting for least, a church on the other side of town. What, at least like a year have we? I don't know. How long? Time for me. COVID messed it all up. COVID um, but time. But we've had that tent for, it seems like, a long time now. But every week, the young men yeah. from church would faithfully come. And we set it up with them. And then Sunday after church, we take it down because we need to have some more to park during the week. But it's just been such a blessing to be able to meet. Because our church, we met in a tavern when COVID, right before COVID hit, we were just meeting in a tavern upstairs, which we thought was kind of cool. Because we were like, hey, we're meeting at a tavern. Come see our church. Like, and then after COVID, the tavern said, nope, you can't come back anymore. So we were just searching. And we have a yard big enough that we were like, just come and be with us. But when rain happens, mm, so the tent has been an answer to prayer because we were, we've been able to meet this whole time at the tent when no one else would rent to us. Mm-hmm. So, and it, yes. and it was a big tent, so we got to was, spread it's out huge. It's and huge. and maintain social distancing yes, and with all the regulations space. and things. So because we had it to be careful really living in another country, we are visitors there, and we don't want to do anything that might get us kicked out. So we followed what we were supposed to follow, and again, having a tent that big, everyone was still able to come and attend. And we wouldn't be looked at different yeah. when we're following the guidelines. So yep. it was good. Very good. Click again. Let's see what other stuff we got. More s- fellowships at church. Tent, yeah. Yep. More stuff. Our church family. Yeah. Sunday school and the little Sunday school room. Ah, this is the Bible college. The, um, another part of what I do is going out to the Bible college and doing trainings out there with the young men who are being trained for the ministry and their families. And um, just wanted to show some pictures of the Bible college there. It's about two hours from our house. I go out there. I do um, some first aid training and stuff with the different classes as they're coming in. And then I also share community health evangelism classes with them to help get them used to it. So when they go back to the churches that they're going to be pastoring, that um, I can use those connections to kind of follow them up and get them involved in that ministry in their community. So this is just family pictures as we were out there at the Bible College visiting with friends. You can go to the next. Um, Some of the classes that we were having and different friends out there for us also. Um, This is more pictures of trainings in in our town in Embarara and celebrations there. You can click again. Um, the training that we hosted at our house. Yeah. And this one, uh, just two, three weeks ago, I noticed that in this picture, I'm not wearing any shoes. So that, <laughs> that was that's a, a little bit of a social faux pas. Shoes are important in Uganda. <laughs> very important. I was wandering around barefoot that day. Oh, well. Um, a pastor's meeting where I was sharing about community health evangelism, getting them on board with that. And let's see what else we got. Ah, that's it. Good. I thought so. Very good. Um, Yeah. Thank you again. Um, I want to share a little bit. Thank you for bearing with me as we share our testimony of what God's doing with our ministry and things. I also want to take some time and share um, just some thoughts that have been an encouragement to me uh, from God's word and maybe can be an encouragement for you guys. Um, We've been through a lot as a world and as God's church and as um, God's children in these last few years. And um, I thought it'd be good to kind of refocus, look at some good basic things again. And um, yeah, just hopefully be an encouragement for you like it's been for me. Uh, How much time do I got? Who do I look to? What? I think it's 1115 right now. Have I burned up all our time? Where are we at? Just keep going? I'll just keep going. All right. I'll try and be quick. So 
Um, as you know, I was a nurse um, before going to the mission field. Um, one of the places I worked, I worked in an emergency department. And when I was moving to working in the emergency department, I had the privilege of working with a friend of mine, and she kind of was my mentor and orienter to that department. And um, every time I'd show up for work during my orientation period, I, um, we'd have a great time working together. When it was time to go home, I would ask my friend, like, hey, um, how'd I do? Is everything OK? Everything's good. See you tomorrow. And that would go on for a little while. After a few weeks of that, of orientation, I had my yearly orientation with my supervisor, um, that the director of the ER. And when I was talking with her, she was saying, Matt, you're doing a great job. You're settling in well. You're getting along well with the other employees. Um, and I don't want you to be discouraged, but I've talked with your friend who's helping orient you. And she shared with me that you're just really not picking up the slack and, and being independent and doing things on your own. You're still depending on her a lot. And don't be discouraged. That's normal. So we may have to extend your orientation period for a little bit. And I, I was shocked to hear this because every day after work, I was asking my friend, like, how'd I do? Yeah, you did great. See you tomorrow. Um, so I thought there's no need for improvement. I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Let me just keep doing it. And um, when I talked with my director, I said, well, now that I know what's expected of me and what you want from me, um, the next time I see you when I'm leaving, because I was working night shift, I'd leave um, in the morning as she was coming in. I said, the next time I see you and you've talked with our friend, you'll take me off orientation. I'll be done. And she said, no, 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 don't do that. I don't, don't, this isn't a big deal. It's normal that sometimes you need more orientation. I said, no. I said, I got this. I just didn't know what was expected of me. And I didn't know what I needed to do to be done. So sure enough, the next shift, I told my friend, you sit back over there and watch me do this. And I did the job. And sure enough, when I saw my boss the next time, she said, I talked with our friend who's orienting you. You are off orientation. Um, you've got this. You are right. Um, so that's what I kind of want to talk to you guys about today is just a little bit about um, what's expected of us as Christians, as followers of Christ, as um, disciples, what we need to be doing, things we need to be looking out for. Because if we don't know what's expected of us, how are we going to do it? Um, so let's look at Psalm 1, and we're just going to look at the first three verses there. It's a very familiar psalm and um, just has some really neat things in it and ties together with some verses that are really important in my life also that I may share. It says here in Psalm 1, How blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does he prospers." I love these verses here because when you read this, this is what I want for my life. I want to be like that tree planted firmly where I need to be, near those resources that God has for me. And I want to be successful. I want whatever I do to be successful. Not in the world's eyes, not by their standards, but in God's eyes. I want to be successful. Um, and this is what I want for my kids. Uh, this is what I want for you guys, too. And I'm sure you want it also. So let's look a little bit uh, in verse 1. I'm going to start with the negative stuff. Um, 
but it's also, it's not really negative, it's just a good warning. Um, when I was doing research for this, I looked up what other uh, men of God had um, had to say about this in commentaries, and I like what Spurgeon um, said. He, he looks at these three things um, in verse 1. Um, walking in the counsel of the wicked, standing in the path of sinners, or sitting in the seat of scoffers. He doesn't look at it as three separate things, but instead he looks at it as a progression. And it was really neat to hear that when I was seeing um, what he was saying. Um, he said the first part where it says, um, don't walk in the counsel of the wicked. Um, when you're walking, you're not rooted down or anything like that. You're moving. Um, and when you're walking in the counsel of someone, it, it can be that you just happen to let in an influence, not intentionally, um, just maybe through uh, different outside things, through the media that we're watching, um, through talking with different folks who, who might not be grounded in God's word and his principles. Um, and, and that counsel can sneak in and that can cause us to stumble and to head the wrong direction and not follow God's way. Um, and, and then the next step in the progression here is um, that we stand in the path of sinners. And this part really stands out to me because if you're standing in the path of sinners, that means it's your path also. And it means that you're heading the, the direction there. And that, that's definitely a big leap from kind of slipping because you kind of let in some of those wrong influences. This is, now the path has become yours and you're calling it your own kind of thing. That's when you start forming bad habits and heading in the wrong direction. But again, this all starts with just letting in the wrong information uh, into ourselves um, through those influences. And then the last one um, in this progression is sitting in the seat of scoffers. And this isn't just like hecklers in class making fun of a teacher. This is people who are scoffing God in his ways. And this is, this is a... Uh, real far progression from the beginning where we were just letting in some bad influences and hearing bad information and making a bad decision and then maybe kind of making some real bad habits and, and doing the wrong thing. Now you're actually an enemy of God and fighting against him actively. Um, it, it's, it says it um, in, in Spurgeon's writings, he says, you're not just the committer of sin, but now you've become the promoter of sin. You're the one that's recruiting other people and bringing them in to the wrong way. And I don't think that any of us are in that category of scoffing and um, seeking to to be an enemy of God and to draw other people away. But I want to warn us and make us think about it because it's a slippery slope and it's real easy to let in the bad influences. Something that struck me when we came back this term was the number of churches with special flags hanging out front for um, being loving and inclusive of sinful behaviors and lifestyles. And I don't think any of those churches set out from the beginning to be scoffers of God and to be promoters of sin. They, they let in some of the wrong counsel. They listened to the wrong advice and the wrong mentalities and things, and they let themselves um, be affected, and maybe they started down the wrong path. And now there are churches that are literally promoting things that are completely anti-Bible, anti-God, and they're promoters of sin. And again, I don't think that is something where we are at, but it all starts 
by listening to the wrong stuff. And we need to be careful with that. We need to be careful what we let into our hearts and let into our families and let into our homes because it's a slippery slope. And I can't imagine what the people who planted some of these churches that are now promoting um, this sin, what those people who started those churches would think if they could see that now. They, would, they wouldn't believe it. Um, and that can be us. It, in just a generation or two, things like that can happen. So that was my negative side. That's the negative stuff that I wanted to touch on uh, as a warning. Um, the next part, uh, in verse 2, it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And this reminds me um, of another passage. And it says, In his law he meditates day and night. Um, a verse that's always meant a lot to me is Psalm 37, 4. And if you can turn over to Psalm 37, um, when I first heard this verse as a young kid, I loved this verse because I misunderstood it. Um, so it says here in Psalm 37, 4, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And to an immature little boy who wants fun things, um, this sounds marvelous. Lord, I love you, and I am delighting in you, so give me all the junk I want. Um, give me all the toys I want. And um, obviously, I, that is not what this passage is saying. Um, as I grew and matured and learned that what it's saying is um, delight yourself in the Lord. Love reading his word. Love talking to him in prayer. Love um, being with him and fellowshipping with him. And he will put in you the desires that you need. Um, and that's really what um, happened in my life. I loved um, getting to know God as I was growing up. I loved being involved in ministry in my church. I loved praying. And um, God put a desire in my heart to be a missionary to Uganda. He gave me that desire. That was not what I wanted at first, but he changed my heart and made me want what he had for me. And that's just awesome. Um, and I'm always excited to hear people's testimonies, not just missionaries. I love listening to missionaries' testimonies because they seem, they're just weird because they're crazy people that go and move to the other side of the world, and it's neat to hear the story that gets them there. But it's neat to hear the story of everyone who's following God if, and the testimonies of how God has worked in their lives as fill in the blank, whatever you are, whatever your profession is, um, and, and how God has moved in your life and uh, gotten you involved in ministry and got you going, doing whatever it is. It's neat, and it's neat to share those testimonies. We need to do that. Um, there are more verses here in Psalm 37, and I'm just going to read through them uh, real quick. And just think about them, and think about how they could apply to your life. I'll share with you a little bit of things that um, maybe mean more to me now, looking back, than they did at the first time I read them. Let's start in verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. This is what's expected of us. Um, this is what we need to be shooting for. Trust in the Lord. Don't trust in what you can do. It's easy. I'm, I'm a handyman, kind of. I like to learn how things work and do things. And because of that, it's easy for me to just trust in me being able to fix it. Um, but that's not a good way to be. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. This means a lot to me because when we first moved to Uganda, I was a fish out of water. I didn't know how to do things that I used to know how to do. I couldn't even go to the store and buy simple things and get what I want and come home. It, it took a whole day to find what I wanted and to get a decent price. And then I would find out afterwards that I got ripped off. Um, I was bad at it. I didn't, I, and I was inept. And that's, that's frustrating. And um, 
and and just discouraging, not being able to just do it and do it well. I didn't have a specific ministry focus right at the beginning because I was still learning my community, what was around me, what the needs were, and how I could fit into that. So, like, I would talk to people, and they're like, oh, what do you do? Um, Tell me about your ministry. And I would be like, oh, crud, this is the worst question in the world. I don't know. I don't know what my ministry is. Um, But it says here, dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Just keep doing what you do know you need to be doing. And God's going to lead to the next step. It's like the principle of the talents. If you're faithful with the little bit that you have right now, he's going to give you more and give you more. Um, So that's a neat part. Then we come to verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Um, It says back in verse 2 in Psalm 1, Um, And in his law, he meditates day and night. Um, We need to be committed to being in God's word. We need to be faithful with it. Um, And because we let a lot of noise into our heads, not just noise, noise, but the world's thinking coming at us um, and different different people's opinions, political stuff, we let into our heads. We get a lot of that information pounded into us. Um, but we need to counteract that and, and work against that by letting God into us through his word and through prayer. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will do it. Um, this is just neat because it's not putting the responsibility on us to get it done, whatever it is in your life. We're committing our way to the Lord. We're trusting in him, and he is going to do it. We don't get to take credit for it, um, but we also don't have the responsibility of making sure that it all works out. He's going to make it work out. And he will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Here in verse 6, um, it, it's not about us being glorified at the end, but by us following God, doing what we need to do, we are giving glory to him. We are reflecting his righteousness to the people around us and, and making them want what we got. Because when we're living in this way that it talks about here, and we are the person that Psalms 1 is talking about, We are going to have joy in our life in spite of the circumstances around us because we are a tree planted where we need to be, near the rivers of water, so we can be refreshed by God. and We can be bringing forth the fruit that we need to be bringing forth, and people will see that, they will want that, and they will follow. And that is an awesome thing. Um, We talk about... um, like our purpose and what we need to do. What is the purpose of an apple tree? I need people to respond. I know we don't call out in church. What's the purpose of an apple tree? To produce apples. You are kind of right. (laughs) The purpose of an apple tree is to produce other apple trees. Because what is the reason that they produce apples? It's to spread seeds so that other apple trees can be planted. Our purpose as disciples of Christ is to produce other disciples of Christ. And we do that through the good works, which are what we talked about here, following God, doing good, cultivating faithfulness, getting in God's word. Those are the fruits that help spread those seeds. And then ultimately, when those seeds grow up, there will be other disciples of Christ that come after you because of what you've done. And that is really, truly our purpose. Our purpose is to glorify God, and we do that by spreading the gospel, sharing the gospel, and bringing other people into the fold. So I hope this is an encouragement for you guys. I hope um, these thoughts are helpful for you um, in your day-to-day 
comings and goings. Um, we've had some rough times. I think sometimes it's good to just get back to the basics. Remember what we're, um, what our main purpose is, what we're supposed to be doing, because we can forget. Um, it can, we can get lost in the noise sometimes. Um, and just getting back to the simple stuff and realizing we can do this, not because we're doing it, but God's going to get it done in our lives. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this church. Thank you that they love us and um, are a part of the ministry that you've given us, Lord, in Embarara. And Lord, we just pray for them. Um, and uh, we thank you for them, Lord. And we look forward to seeing what you have for us moving forward. Um, because, Lord, you, you promised that we will prosper. We will be successful uh, if we're doing what we're supposed to do. Help us to be faithful and do our part. And, Lord, we look forward to being successful. However that is, um, we have an idea of what success is in our eyes, in the world's view. But, Lord... We want to be successful spiritually and in your eyes, and that's the most important. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks.